So how you doing? Doing good? I've been good, man. It's uh it's kind of a busy season right now, but a good season. We're uh we're flipping a house, you know, we both are working, you know, me and Myrna, and then toss this this leading to take on this opportunity in uh, the local district here. So you say you're flipping a house? Yes, it's our first one. Wow, together? Yeah. Not by yourself? Me, I mean, me, Myrna, and then we just, you know, whoever, she does a lot on the painting stuff and the detail yeah. stuff, and I kind of lay she floor likes that and stuff, huh? do the heavy lifting. Yeah, she's liked it for a while, so kind of part of a long-term dream to have some rentals and flip flip the ones that are meant to be flipped and rent the ones that are, that That's are good awesome. to be rented, so That's we're exciting. working at it. What's the, uh, what's the market been like there in Dodge? You know, it was really hot, you know, just like everywhere things were selling for way more than they should. It seemed like, but yeah. it was like people were willing to pay. And now I think with interest, interest rates rising and cost of living going up, you know, Coming it's, it's kind of got really house prices had, they've just kind of leveled off, but I think there's just less buyers right now. So that makes for little bit of a tough scene but yeah. at least Myrna is like five years into it you know six years into it and has She's a lot of you ebbs know, and flows a little bit well and has a lot of clients out there that are that are looking or she's worked with before and have referred a friend and you know just things like that if this was your first year and you were just trying to yeah scratch around and find customers it'd be i think it'd be difficult well and we're i mean five years in she might have some her first clients might be ready to move again right like yeah having some people that are ready to buy five years later yep that's good well man we haven't we haven't really chatted we've we chatted a little bit um but i got really really excited when i saw your facebook post well about, tell me about your excitement about uh, jumping into i mean you messaged me and it was yeah. kind of the like that heartfelt excitement of like man that's that's cool i that it was so weird it. because, you, you know, you and I have done ministry together. Mm -hmm. um, we've, I think part of that ministry work is political in a way, you know, as far as building and team working and putting people around you and you've got a goal and, you know, it kind of has that politics feel. And I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean like, that's kind of the, you're serving a purpose, you know? Right. And I don't know why, like, this is something I probably would have launched you into a long time ago as mm. a friend. And I, I don't know, but when I saw it, it just like, my spirit was like, that makes total sense. Like you being a governmental guy, you know, mm. working in the government, it just, it, it made sense. You know, we, we tried to do that a little bit in ministry, governmental right. stuff. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, I, I don't know why that never made sense. Is that something that had been on your heart for a while or? No? Uh, I wouldn't say a while. I mean, kind of my big thing has always been, you know, just like, restoration of Dodge city. Mm -hmm. And we've for a long time, we've been like, okay, what are the, what are the spheres of influence? And I, I think I had rightfully and wrongfully kind of put that into the church, yeah. you know, and the church is supposed to influence everything mm -hmm. um, as the body of Christ, be light, be salt, you know, all that good yep. stuff. Um, but I think restoration is about, you know, something that is, not right and making it right yeah and you know well that's kind of where you know covid did some you know covid worked on me uh, i i watched a i watched a movie called agenda and then agenda two if, it, if yeah. anybody hasn't hasn't watched those they're just it's just a good documentary and, and i think they have their slant they know what they're going after and trying to find you know as far as kind of the progressive movement yeah. in America and what it's done and what it's after and just trying to uh, maybe wake people up a little bit to, Hey, this is, there's some stuff going on. That's not necessarily biblically correct. Yeah. And that, 
um, we might want to pay attention to and, and how we do that matters just as much as doing something. But um, the uh, probably this last year, I mean, you, you've kind of been privy to a little bit of my private journey of, you know, kind of stepping out away from, you know, kind of pastoral leadership for almost 20 years and just not really know it, like not really knowing exactly what was going on there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, kind of one of the major things that I had kind of in my heart that I knew was there that I, that I didn't want to remain was I, I know people had always been a joy to me and like very yeah. much so. And, yeah. and I don't know if it was just, you know, I did need a break or, or, or what it was, but I, I really felt, and, you know, listeners are, you know, past congregation members like the, it, it wasn't very long until I recognized it, but I, there was an annoyance of, of mm -hmm. people that had kind of grown in me that, that I didn't like in me pastorally. Yeah. And so I needed to kind of take a break, get that back right to where, and then in this, in this break, you know, that was probably what last mm -hmm. September ish, you know, that it was a kind of a full step away. Yeah. Um, and it had been, you know, working up to that for, you know, three, four months of, just trying to be honest and real um and you know kind of also once once i didn't have church ministry because i was bivocational um then the farm you know working on our family farm was that there was something missing relationally because it's it's pretty lonesome you know you're yeah. i was around family and you know three or four other employees and i'd come home and especially in the summertime when the hours are long there just wasn't a whole lot of other relational time. And so once I didn't have kind of the, Hey, keep leading this thing forward, keep relating to people, keep, you know, yeah. once I didn't have that position, then I really felt that the farm might not be all that well suited to kind of my relational influential cravings um, that are just inside of me yeah. and that I just have to be honest about. And so this this kind of came about you know in the for clarity on what this is yeah. um running for the 119th district which is the basically the bulk of dodge city the the 115th district is the five counties around it you're talking the the spearbills the bucklands the yeah. you know uh and, and that's a different one than mine mine is a a large large swath of Dodge city. And yeah. so that also interests me because most of my, you know, connections and relation over the years is, is right here in the city and some across the County and beyond, but more so just right here. And so that that's what this is as I'm, as we're starting to talk yeah. about is just represented for the 119th district and basically in the, in the house of representatives, um, helping vote on, you know, like what, what I think my beliefs, my values, but also representing the community that voted me in, if that happens on August 2nd. And, you know, we can talk about, you know, some of the yeah. things that pushed me to that, but, you know, that, that, that's where I'm at now. And, you know, some of the, some of the journey to get there is, well, it's a longer story than probably this podcast, but yeah, I'm sure. So what, I'm interested. One thing that I I've learned over the last um, two years for sure, but I think probably halfway in Trump's run, Trump's administration, I really began to understand the importance of local elections mm -hmm. more than ever before. Like I never understood. It's easy, you know. You can call yourself political. You can call yourself, you know patriotic or whatever and you go vote every four years for the president right because that's what you see on the new you know you see the mm. the build mm -hmm. up and there, there is some patriotism to that and some excitement sure your your vote counts and you're american and you're voting for america and all that but so many times the the local races the local elections the stuff that ultimately affects me in a much broader way right i would overlook I, I didn't see it as as important to go out and vote for that, that and that's what, just a lack of knowledge on my part i didn't understand what, that what what shifted that um 
I think there was, well, definitely in 2020, the, the feeling that my vote didn't count, I mean, was, was magnified. Mm -hmm. And so there was like this, uh, distrust of the big system, but I'm also a man of, of hope and faith. And I'm like, that can't be all, you know, there's gotta be more to this than that. Mm -hmm. And so then I just began to like shrink it down a little bit instead of thinking so big picture about everything, right. I shrink it down to like, I'll just say that the man that got voted in the man that won the election does not represent me at all. Right. You know? And so what does represent me would be the local elect, you know, the local races, the local elections, the, I mean, let's, mm -hmm. let, let's, let's get real. You're, I know for you, with the restoration of Dodge city, you heard the Lord, you heard that phrase in your heart. And I know that there's been some frustration in your, on your part that you feel like you haven't been able to see that through, or you haven't understood maybe even what God meant by that in your life. And so I think that when you said that a little while ago, that just makes total sense to me that this is a way that you can help bring that word to pass. Um, yeah. You know, affecting, affecting your circle, right? Your mm -hmm. influence where you're at, you, you have a, can, can you speak to that a little bit more as a, as a guy who's running for a, a local position, a local race? Uh, how important is it for us to understand the gravity of like the local, the locals? Yeah. Um, the, one of my first speeches here at a, uh, at a Friday night thing, um, I, I referenced the famous John F. Kennedy, the JFK quote of ask not what mm -hmm. your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And it's like, uh, uh, that is a great quote, no yep. question, but it, it's kind of the, it's the big quote. It's like the, the country, the whole thing. Yeah. And, and I, I just kind of challenge people to, you know, kind of shrink that down a little bit of, you know, three kind of staples to my campaign and just kind of what I feel like I represent well is faith and family and freedom. And okay. And then at the whole ask not shrink that ask not what you can do, what your family can do for you, but what you can do for your family. That's good. That's not what your faith or your church can do for you, but what you can do for your faith or your church yeah. your community. And, you know, where is freedom missing in our culture? You know, who is, who is missing like genuine freedom, not make everything right in their life. But if there's bondage, if there's things that are on them that I can help get off, that they could make easier, better decisions yeah, and be more responsible because they don't have so much weight on, like, how can I take, if Jesus took personal responsibility for my freedom, yeah, then how can I kind of adopt that into Yes, the big, you know, yes, the go vote. Yes, be informed. Yes, all that good stuff. But uh, more on a local level, you know, kind of the and then I think where, you know, some of the local once I, I, I heard some things that my local representative voted on and some of them that I agreed with and some of them that were like you said, they just didn't represent me at all. Yeah. And there was even kind of some sub petitions to, you know, on mask mandates by community that for our area that just really didn't even get heard by our representative. And then what he advised our commissioners and different things like that to, to go ahead and basically give constitutional permission to. And I was like, there was just several things that, that didn't that kind of rubbed me wrong. And then yeah. one of the other things of the local thing was that he just doesn't live here. You know, that for, for me, that was, that was kind of a last straw. You know, I'd heard, yeah. you know, three, four, five votes. And I was like, eh, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't have voted that way. And it doesn't represent me very well. But then, you know, something really tugged at me when I was like, hey, he doesn't, he doesn't live here. Like, yeah. What? How's, how's, how's that work? And I, yeah. and there's loopholes and there's a rental oh, yeah. of a house, you know, things like that. And it, and it, it's okay, but it's just okay. It's not great. It's not really the way I think it, it should be, you know, if a yeah. pastor is at a church or a business owner is at, at, at a business and they, they're putting that, you know, heart and passion and care into that local entity, it's different. It has a different ability 
you know, to solve the problems that are in that, that region, then a, a distant law or a distant, Hey, here's some money or right. a yeah, distant yeah. encouragement is different than me and you and how we know each other yeah, and how we could encourage each other, knowing each other's journey, knowing some of the things that have happened and really being able to with, with understanding, um, lean in and offer advice, solutions, or yeah. just comfort. You know, yeah. it just comes different when it's really local. So when it, in, in the local stuff, that, that was some of mine, that was just some pain points in my local representation. And then, okay, transfer that out to, you know, quite a few other people that there was, there was issue with. And then they just came to me and kind of came to several people and that, you know, different circumstances worked in, in different people's lives. And, and here I am, you know, trying, you know, yeah. it's uh, kind of also one thing that played into it is kind of my, my word for the year was uh, a no fear year, which yeah. kind of sounds like a, you know, it always should be that. But I, I think it was a, it was kind of a mark for, Hey, things are really going to shift and I'm going to need you to really pay attention to not be afraid, like to, good. to try and be full of faith in this, that uh, like I'm with you, no matter the outcome, that there's something that I'm doing in, in you and through you. And, uh, anyway, so I don't know if that fully answered your question, no, but kind of just the, the local thing, uh, the only other, other thing that I kind of wrote down is I was just, just prepping for some of the, the questions that, that, that you asked one, one thing that, that came up was that I think, I think the big elections and the big politics is kind of like Facebook and Twitter. And I, I just feel like they, they, they are good tools. I'm not saying that I don't use them and that, and that they're good tools, but I really think they're, they're kind of like definitions I've heard of the church where, you know, they can be a 10 miles wide and an inch deep. Yeah. And, and I think to really enact change, you got to get at the root of something and yeah. to be able to get at the root, you're going to have to be face to face. You're going to have to be available. You're going to, you're going to have to go a little deeper than it's comfortable. Yeah. And you're probably going to have to be exposed in some ways to invite other people to, to offer up their, their own personal exposure to be raw and real about what's the real problems. You know, I, I, I think what, you know, that, that 10 miles wide thing does is it polarizes us. Yeah. It, it pushes us into out of the real conversations that need to be had around abortion about a uh, woman's right to choose, you know, just, these things that are, uh, we make them into these, these hot button issues that polarize because we're just an inch deep or yeah. we're really trying to hear the story. And I'm not saying that there's not truth that draws it, draws a clear line, but just because truth draws a clear line doesn't mean, you know, a Christian or anybody on the planet really has permission to kind of go off in a disrespectful dishonoring, you know, honor was a big kind of code of conduct for us when we did ministry together of really making sure we weren't just throwing a truth, but we were, we were delivering it with, with the honor that would help it get planted where it needed to get planted. Right. And I, that that's just kind of what I see missing in, in politics. That was the other thing on the local question that I, I kind of wrote down was I, I just felt some of that, you know, get a little deeper into these issues um, was, was missing in some ways that I felt like, Hey, uh, I could lean in and maybe I have a, a bit of a skill set to listen and to not just, not just speak, but, but listen enough that then when we do speak, it's, it's something that's, that's good enough to actually be heard. Yeah. I think one of the, I think one of the things that, and I, I feel like I'm speaking on behalf of many people that I've been in contact with, but in regards to specifically the national elections and stuff, national politics, you see just some of the dirt and some of the, like how it just turns people, you know, you could be a well-meaning, good hearted person and you just turn into the system, you know, and there's mm -hmm. so much back and forth deal-making and compromise and, and things like that. That's gotta be, a pressure on the local level as well. And, and mm -hmm. I, so I have, a, I have a question for you about that. So as much as you're a representative 
of your district, the people that you're living life with, how important is it to you to also continue to run according to your heart and what you believe? Because I think you know what I'm saying there. Like, it's easy to like say, I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of freedom. I'm a man of this. But you're also representing a group of people. But for me, I think this is why I probably wouldn't fare too well in politics is I, I can't go away from something that's part of who I am. You know, I, I could not shift and make deals that would compromise like my, my heart. What's, yeah. what's that like on the, on the local level like this? Well, it's no I different think, than the national stuff. It's just on a smaller scale, like we said. Yeah, you're, you're lagging a little bit. I don't know if it's on my end or your end, um, but how we, how we doing on sound? You okay now? I'm good. Yeah. You were lagging just a little bit. Maybe okay. it was my end with my the bad. connection. Um. I would say one thing for me is as I've thought about like, who am I representing? You know, the primary people that I'm representing would be those who voted for me. Right. And do I represent everybody? Yes. In, in a broad sense, but they're, you know, in, in this kind of spot, the local, you know, the a, a democ- democratic, electoral candidate is is nowhere to be found you know on on the other side and so i have a a republican that i'm going up against in a primary that i think i'm more conservative in in ways and that's that's where i i want to say and and you know more faith-based and i not necessarily that but just i i just want to be in union with the lord and i i want to stand there and then I also want to, you know, one of my favorite ways to dialogue with people is, you know, we get into a, a topical conversation and maybe we disagree ideologically or even disagree about faith. And just actually the, the, the next step right there for me is to just ask them why, you know, what, what, what has happened that has brought you to those beliefs? Yeah. You know, what, what have you learned? What have you listened to? Who has influenced you? And not to really change their mind, but to just hear them first, but also see if they've thought about why they believe what they believe. Because a lot of times, you know, we, we're the most marketed to generation ever. Yeah. We know that we say that we preach that, you know, the younger generation, even more with, with how much those phones are in our face. And it, it's amazing how much those little tidbits can, can get into our psyche and really influence our thinking without we even knowing it. And not even really thinking about it, not right. deeply thinking about, you know, core values. And I, I just feel like I'm, I'm at an age and enough to where I, I know who I am. I know what I stand for. I know what I'm still maybe asking questions about, but, you know, to be shifted around um, probably isn't going to happen too much on major issues. Um, and, and that's the important part about running yeah. tr- truthful from the beginning, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, and I think we see that again on the national scale, you know, debates and all that stuff. You see the playing games back and forth and, and, and pandering to certain crowds and certain people. And yep. got to get those votes. Gotta just get, dishonest, mm-hmm. you know, about who you are and what you're planning on doing. Right. And I think you, you made a, a very valid point. You technically, are representing the people that voted you in because you won, right? Like more people, that's the mm-hmm. larger majority of the people that you're right, that you'd be representing. And I, as far as I'm concerned, if you're upfront about who you are from the very beginning, that's you're not screwing mm-hmm. anybody over, you're not cheating anybody. It's like I yeah. said, this is who I am, that's what I'm going to do. No bait and switch, no, yeah. no. It's just the, the truth. And then, then trying to walk that out without, you know, that, that was a verse. Let me, let me, let me read it. Yeah. Cause it kind of, kind of goes to this. 
Um, and it was to you, your question of how important is it to sort of pay more attention to our local elections and, and yeah. the verse that actually kind of, as opposed to so much the national election. So the very question we're, we're talking about, but um, the first Peter three, 14 through 16. Uh, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. And this is the part that always gets quoted. Uh, always be prepared or always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior, against your good behavior in Christ, may be ashamed of their slander. Yeah. So I, that'd be a bit of like a, how I want to operate in this this spot is is trying to be, you know, gentle and respectful, but very much a, hey, I, I have, I have a Lord, I have a master and I can't get by with just Jason's way of doing things. Yeah. And, you know, we, we can talk about, you know, how to implement that, but, you know, that whole mindset right there of always be prepared to give an answer. Uh, that's why I think we need to pay attention to what's going on right around us because that's part of the preparation. Uh, of right. like, why do you have the answer that you have about whatever topic it is that like, what, what's your hopeful solution to that problem in the world? Be ready with an answer. You know, yeah. I don't think it's just talking about like this gets used for evangelism. Yes. But it doesn't just say evangelism right there. Right. It it's, it's broader than that. Mm -hmm. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. Yeah. So where's your hope at? That's good. And I think, you know, politics can very much be all the pain points in society and not a lot of the hope points. Yeah. And in all, in each of those pain points, that's where we need hope. So I'm not saying don't talk about the pain points, but make sure you've got a hopeful response. And that's good. Yeah. That's kind of where I want to be at in it our life is filled with these responses that people are watching. Right. So it's like mm -hmm. having an answer for, man, why did you treat the person that way when they treated you this way? You know, have an answer for man, why do you handle your money the way that you do have an mm -hmm. answer for, you know, why, why do you vote the way that you do? Why yeah. do you care about the things that you care about? That's good. That's a good, uh, that's a good reminder for sure. Are you are you willing to dabble a little bit in the Roe v. Wade situation? Sure. I what me, you know, I think people are finally beginning to understand exactly what that what that meant. Right. When when that was overturned, that it puts it back to the states to decide mm -hmm. for their people. So that puts I don't want to say pressure on you, but it definitely that automatically made that a topic mm -hmm. for your race, I'm sure. Yep. yep. Um, how are you handling that? Or what, when you found out about that situation, how that changed, what did, what, what was going on with you and your, your campaign, your desire, what, uh, how, how did that affect you? Yeah, it, uh, I think it, it, it brought up a, a, a bit of, uh, you know, I, I, I got a, I got another friend that, that's pretty boisterous and, and just kind of, he's a good check for, Hey, is the Christian community, is it doing that gentle and respect thing right here? Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of went, cause it was, it's something that we know a lot of Christians have been praying for, you know, as far as a, like an overturning of that and, you know, that it started in Kansas too. It's, it's a, it's a Kansas burden a bit you know, on yeah. the, you know, millions of, of lives that we don't get to know their story over the years. And there's, there's other complications to it than just the problem of abortion. And yeah. uh, I, I wouldn't mind delving into that too. Yeah. Um, but you know, when that, when that came down, you know, one, one, one piece of feedback that I was like, yeah, you're, you're not wrong was just kind of the, the gloating, you know, kind of the calling it, praising the Lord, but doing it on Facebook. And uh, of of that decision, and I, I'm in no way saying that we shouldn't do that and like celebrate it. But I just think we 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 have an audience 
that we're actually supposed to reach, not piss off? And and can do we do more harm when we gloat on a decision that has went our way? And for yes, 30 years it didn't. And so in all those years, did I ever point the finger at those who maybe are not on a possibly a Christ-like team? Uh no, because I actually can't like that. <laughs> that's not my role. My, my role is not to judge outside of the body, but to judge in and to try and create a value set that is appealing with my lifestyle and that that be part of my mission. And so that, that was one thing that come up. But as far as personally, was I happy about it? Yes, um, that that it got overturned, that, you know, some of the long term planning. Um, I'll just be honest, by the Republican Party to not just focus on lawmaking and and executive branch, but do some work in the judicial system where a lot of stuff has has gotten passed off as law, even though it's just a court saying, well, it's not unlawful. It's not necessarily a law, but just because they then called it unlawful, now it becomes legal. Right. Well, it's not a law. There's no law that makes abortion legal yeah and and so it it's just there's a there was a muddy area in in culture and that's part of the beauty of you know our government is that it's not you know just a king yeah. so if it's not just a king then what is it well we're going to have three branches we're going to have we're going to be able to vote on these things we're going to have like checks and balances and and so I, there's I a, do, there's a uniqueness to it i do think there's so many people that have no problem just using their mouth and their words, but they really have no idea what they're talking about, especially with big issues like that. I mean, it comes, Mm -hmm. you know, I hear so many people, the the Supreme court is just ruining our democracy. I'm like, actually it's exact opposite. Yeah. They're literally putting this to democracy and allowing democracy to take place in this thing. So yeah. Do you feel like this is a moral issue? As far as abortion? Yes. Absolutely. Um, do, you, do you feel like, how does, how does morality play in politics? Hmm. Well, I, the reason I ask this, I've been having a lot. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I've been steaming <laughs> the last couple of days. You've been steaming? I've been steaming. Un, unbelievable. <laughs> I know. Whoa, I, I've been steaming in regards to, I mean, I've just had so many, um, yeah, I, people show their lack of understanding for sure. Mm-hmm. And it turns into, I almost feel like it's a, they know it at this point and they, it's just a projection of bitterness and anger and and it, it comes out like kind of like you said before but on the opposite side for me and right yeah it's it's on the opposite side as well one of the one of the one of the things that somebody was hitting me up on facebook and they were saying that this is a this is a morality issue that this is a moral issue and i said yes it absolutely is a moral issue and they said well that's the reason that this can't be basically uh this can't be something that is in place in government because it's it's a moral issue and for me i had a really difficult time here it didn't make any sense yeah i was trying really hard to understand and i've asked a few follow-up questions and didn't get a whole lot back but why would people think that jason gets doesn't get to run for office with morals and with morality is i mean that's obviously something that you're i would say it's just kind of an oxymoron for me because i mean everybody has a morality it's just what is it based in yeah you know what what is their morality based in and you know just kind of going back to the founders they said a lot of things about hey nothing can stop us from outside so the the number one thing that that will, in a sense, bring a free society down is 
uh, I'll use it in, in the terms I like better is because uh, morality is in the middle of this uh, righteousness and lawlessness mm -hmm. to where there's really, there's, there's no rules and then the, and, and righteous being like the right rules and that create, and, and my view of government very much is, uh, I would like to see a smaller one that it empowers like responsible living like and just kind of that that's why capitalism to me is is not just the money part of it but it's the personal responsibility part of it yeah. it's like uh, you gotta make a budget you know build a business you gotta you gotta serve your clients you gotta like there's there's a personal responsibility and if you do well in that personal responsibility i i bet you things are gonna go well with you and then on the moral side of this issue I, I, I do think for me, and I, I had this on a job site, like right when I started at Christian brothers and they, cause it was close to election, like it was election time and they were, they were asking questions and, and I was like, man, it, the, just each platform to me, there's a, there's a real clear distinction. One, one kind of has a, a, a belief that humans can be problem solvers and one that humans are a problem. And yep. right on this abortion issue, and and I know it's not as clear as that, but for me, like life is 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 what's supposed to happen, and how we can lean in and and help those help life happen for other people, for whether it's a baby or a mother or a father, and and I've had an interesting kind of thought process um, around this of of why why the push for um women to want this and just in my kind of ministry and, and life history uh, not in i don't think of like a sexist way or anything i i actually try and bring it back to the man like is there's there's a lot of men out there that in a sense are very irresponsible men and there, there's quite the culture of irresponsible men and then you have women who they want a relationship with with a man and so now they have to go into this kind of irresponsible world of men and then there's these consequences sexually whether it's you know a child or the other stuff that goes with it we don't have to get into but so I, I just feel like that morality is really at the center and the end of this and then how we're solving the problem so it's like, how do we make judgments and what do we base our judgments off of? And, and I think we need a moral compass in this. And I, I know where I'm choosing for a, for a moral compass. And, I, and even if, if I get elected, you can't dictate that. Like you, you can't dictate my morals over onto somebody. So how do, how do, we, how do we show the fruitfulness? You know, uh, good tree bears good fruit. And that yeah. fruit is is visible and it tastes good. And I've heard your sermons on these type of things. And so I, I really think that one of my initiatives, and I haven't found the organization that I'm really going to partner up with, but it would be uh, mentoring style, like raising up, you know, kind of the boys to men, uh, girls to women, you know, yeah. the, helping the family. Like, man, there's issues in family. I don't care if you're married. Like, it's not easy but it's that doesn't make it wrong like it, yeah. it, it can be done right even though it's hard and it it still is the best solution at the local level of each person's life when family is done in in a selfless moral way yeah and kind of that that's kind of the core solution for it to me you know legislating this getting you know abortion back to the states and it being more democratic I think that's a win, you know, the value them both bill that is that is coming through that it would at least put the same regulations on the abortion industry and abortion facilities as a hospital, you know, it is a step in the right direction. I had a young man come up to me after I spoke on last Friday night and he was just like, the one thing I don't like about the value them both is it doesn't, you know, in a sense, outlaw abortion. It doesn't go. It's not yeah. forthright that way. It's more of a, hey, let's regulate this. Let's really track how how th how this is going like we need a little bit better access to know how this is going not just the 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 finances and how many babies or how many women 
but more details. And, and that's really what it calls for is a kind of a pulling back of, of a bit of a veil and more truth to get exposed. And I think better decisions get made off of better truth. Explain, explain to me the, uh, the yes or no vote that's coming for that, because I think there's some, I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about it other than the way that I think I'm going to vote just because of <laughs> what I know yeah. from watching the TV and stuff. I feel like there's some deception on the other side with their commercials and their campaigns mm -hmm. and can you explain constitutionally what this means to me from from what i understand is that it, it kind of like just what i said just not to overly repeat myself but it just it it brings some actual regulation on that sphere of our culture and is it is, that, it, is, it, is it is it changing the constitution though is it bringing an amendment to the constitution Hmm. because the commercials that i've seen for the vote no was they're saying vote no to altering the constitution is it, and i feel like that's deceptive a little bit i would say that's pretty close to deception because that's yeah. not at all how i understand it yeah i didn't um, either okay yeah just kind of the, the more heightened uh, awareness and you know one of the things that you know not not to go there but it, it was it was disheartening that you know during pandemic times and then even after that at, that that organization got to stay open yeah that that was essential and you know just from multiple sources of true documentation it, it's not a female health service yeah. It, it, it has a, it has a kind of a sole purpose of, of like what they do and yeah. that, 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 that needed to stay essential and, you know, churches and multiple other things. And so I just, that's where I feel like this, this bill helps regulate that a little bit better of, yeah. of help. No, it, it, this is just, this is just like a hospital. If we're at least going to treat it that way, then it, it needs to offer some of the same services as a hospital. Yeah. And if it can't. Yeah. I do remember before this Roe v. Wade even came back to the surface, I remember Planned Parenthood always discussed that abortions were only 3% of their profits. Only 3%. Yet many of them are closing their doors now because for some reason they're not bringing in the profits that they were before. And I think that there's just the, the last two years, man, the last three years, there's just so much being revealed. I think dark and light, good and evil, truth, fake that black lines are being drawn in my opinion. And I don't know that it's that bad of a thing. I've been in, involved in a lot of communities and, and cultural things that would really promote unity and promote. And I, I know as, as a, as a politician, it is your desire for us to be unified as, you know, as a district and as a sure, state sure, sure. and as a country. I don't know that that's ever going to happen. <laughs> and so I think that one thing sure. that is very possible is that there can be a stagnancy as a people that we're afraid to go one way or the other. And we're afraid to do this. I feel like now at least both sides are moving in a direction. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like there's at least some momentum and in my opinion, not Republican Democrat, but good versus evil. One side is going to triumph. You know, I believe in the goodness of God and I believe in the goodness of man that, that he has placed inside of them. And I just feel that now, you know, what's, what's the, what's the one thing that you always, what's the, the one phrase that you always brought up the about man being fully alive. What's that? What's that quote? Um, Ooh, you, you know what I'm talking about? Testing my brain here. Man um, being fully alive. Yeah. 
the glory of God yeah. is man fully alive. Yeah. It's by uh, um, Irenaeus. Yeah. And older saint. And that, and that just kind of the, the, the point of it was, you know, to me is God already has his glory. What he wants to do is bestow that. And there's a cooperation and there's a union there. Like when I, when I think of unity, uh, I'm more so think of, of that unity of that oneness. Yeah. And Jesus actually spoke pretty clearly about it and prayed very clearly about it, of, of what was available as far as union with God yeah. and the, the things that it would really solve in, in the human complexity. Yeah. And the, the way that it would minister to us if we were, if there was a deep union there. And then from that, I think then there can be a union with others who are kind of, in a sense, in union with that. Unified in, by the spirit, yeah. right? Yes. That's I mean, that, what that verse that's the, definitely That's explicit. the biblical concept. Yeah. Absolutely. Of, yeah. of oneness. And, you know, how much I, I heard a cool it was basically a, a, I'll have to send it to you, but it was basically a pastor saying, you know, people come to church to hear the truth and then know what, know what's wrong and know how to get forgiveness and know how to receive grace and then unto salvation. And he said, but you know, really what is being removed? And he had these, he had these signs that and it was like a nine letter, you know, nine word sentence. And at each one he would go and then he'd, he'd remove the last one and he'd remove and he'd remove. And, and the, the one that is like, how can people repent without truth? Hmm. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to enact change without truth. And I just don't think that works very well you know, you're going to change it just into something maybe even more wrong or just as wrong, but yeah. you're going to change. Yeah. But what is repentance, like real change, like the, the depth of change. And, and I think that that absolutely takes a, a source of truth that is supernatural. That's, yeah. that's beyond, you know, our human ability. And, you know, just as I've recently kind of just delved into this and I, I always had a little bit, but just kind of founding fathers, there was 29 of them that were ordained ministers. And I mean, they call, you know, England called them the black robes. Yeah. They were scared of them. You know, yeah. they were, it, it was, and, and there was a, and there was some deists and not, not all the founding fathers were, you know, born again, believers, nothing like that. But you know, if you're, if somebody's listening and, and, you know, go do your own research, go do your own homework, but the, the truth of, of how our, our nation was founded is what was on a Judeo-Christian values. And that's what they said. If, if we step outside of that, we're actually no longer who we started out to be. Yeah. You know, um, the root of the thing is the fruit of the thing. And the birth of a thing is, you know, what, where, where it's supposed to go. And so, Anyway, I just, I, I find that pretty interesting that it, that is the root of this country. And, you know, honestly, just like Israel, we don't have to stay there, but it's what we're intended to be. Yeah. And then I, I think we, we do overly nationalize that we've, we've got to privatize it and then we've got to bring it into our local context. And the more that that is, you know, natural and grassroots, and this is, really what I believe, not just what I say on Facebook or say on a podcast or say somewhere, but it's, this is, this is truly who I am. Then I think morality returns and respectfulness returns. And at least in the circles that want to participate in that. Yeah. Most many laws are in place for moral reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Like that. I'm telling you, man, that Facebook, message like jacked me up because i'm like are we really are we really gonna say that you shouldn't be legislating based off of moral issues like that doesn't make any sense to me is isn't stealing a moral issue isn't uh, mur i mean murder is ultimately a moral issue and for those of us that stand on the side of life many of us believe that it is a it's a it's, it's murder it's a life it's being murdered mm -hmm. that's what that's that's the belief that I hold. And it doesn't mean, and this is where I, I think it, it gets frustrating too on our side. I'm sorry for banging the abortion drum. It's just kind of a hot topic. So 
I, and maybe I'm not really in your district, but maybe I'm, I'm crying out to a, to a, a, a representative here. I, I hope, I hope you, and I hope anybody that, that's running for office has a moral compass and is, is willing to institute things and put things into place. If the majority of your people all of a sudden want to do something or want you to do something that goes against your moral compass, what's, what's Jason Getz do in that situation? Hmm. I think we'd go back to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have to suffer for what I think is right, you know, right inside of that. And, you know, probably some people that were maybe friends or close acquaintances are probably not going to be as close, you know, anymore. And that's just going to, going to have to shift. Um, unless they've got a really, I mean, if it's immoral to me, then there's really no good reason. You know, but if we're if we're talking about something that that I haven't made a decision on, or it's you know something not as clear to me, and and they talk me into something and it doesn't work, well, that's not really a that was we tried something and didn't work, and we've all done that. Yeah. But yeah, if somebody asked me to you know use campaign finances for something they're not supposed to be used for, no, and yeah, there's really no way around that. Yeah, that's, that's another one. Like dealings with money, there's a lot of laws in place on how mm-hmm. people and businesses are supposed to be handling their money, right? Mm-hmm. People are in prison because they mishandled money. And that seems like a moral issue too. <laughs> you know, ultimately it doesn't affect, you know, what Madoff did doesn't affect me, you know? Yeah. Didn't affect me personally, but I'm, I'm glad he's behind bars because it was... In fact, it's somebody it coming. Yeah. What, what's that? It, fe- it affected somebody. It did. You yeah. Know, he stole somebody's money. That's right. That's right. And I think that's where, I think that's where we feel the justice system, you know, as far as a law that's in place, so, you know, somebody, somebody does something to one of your children and now it's like, okay, there needs to be justice for that. You know, and justice is a, it, it's a, it's a key word right now as far as, you know, what, what is being hoped for in, in culture and okay, what we have some processes for that. And if those processes are broken and they're not actually delivering justice, what does reform look like and what, how, how do we do that? But at least we have some sort of system. That's not just personal justice that, you know, vengeance and all the, all the tough guy movies that, you know, they just go after, you know, get Liam Neeson on them. Yeah. And at least, at least we have something in, in governance. And, th- and that's where I think government can rightly serve. And, you know, you also have, you know, a lot in the church that I, I feel like we, we could do a little bit more and not patty cake and just trying to attract so much, but kind of get, not before it gets legal hey this you're going in the wrong direction bud like you know a correction you know the law is supposed to be a correction i got corrected when i was young and getting in trouble with the law and it it ran me up against and into something that i was like okay uh i'm gonna get in trouble if i do that and i that's not what i where i want to go and so the law can be it can be very much a good thing and then that judicial system coming up and actually backing up the law yeah and delivering some consequences that are not crushing but they're helpful to change you know there's some consequences there you know this is this is kind of parenting 101 you know and the government is kind of wants to be a a rightful entity to kind of parent the larger culture but without the right moral compass how can they how can they do that well and you know i think that's that's what i'm hoping to you know kind of put in one one of the first things, you know, just what, of, of why for me, um, you know, deeply conservative, morally, relationally, philosophically, economically, uh, my roots are in, you know, family farming and local church, like, and it kind of the sentence that just kind of came out as I was writing is with honest, hard work and faith filled relationships, I believe all the problems we are facing in society can find an achievable solution because hmm. that, that that's where I feel actual achievable solutions seem to be 
so far fetched that yeah. we we just stay in the weeds of the problem. But you know, we need more of a resiliency to the hard work that's going to go with fixing this, and enough relational continuity to stay the course. You know, because anytime you're trying to fix something that's been broke for a long time, like those conversations get heated. Like yeah. they don't go well the first few times, but if you can, if you can stay the course and actually try and hear and understand and, and like that, those two things for me are a big thing that I don't see in politics enough of like, why is Jason running? Yeah. And that, that was kind of a, a core thing that I've been wrestling with is why. And I, I just feel like it, it, it's kind of a, it can be a bit of a fluff job and kind of a, uh, popularity contest job rather than a hey this is work like we got to figure out if this law is the right law for our for our people and really vote on this well and take time at it and yeah i i i actually need to and want to have a a respect and even a love for those that i disagree with enough that i'm trying to understand where they're coming from to where i can relate to them if I do that long enough, I feel like we could come to the to the solutions that would actually work. Yeah. And it's good. Whenever I've gotten the opportunity to do that with a brother in Christ or a marriage or a you know that I've gotten to work with people over the last couple of decades, whenever we've stayed the course, good things have happened. Whenever it's been kind of short lived, you know, shallow roots or rocky soil, yeah, you yeah. know, hit something too hard, but it that that's the good soil of politics and that's what i hope to kind of bring over it over to it if i get an opportunity and and i think some of it's already there i don't think it's all that but i i do think there's a there's a shallowness to it and a self-serving nature to it because it it is so power it is a powerful entity and it can you can get some some kickbacks and so yeah. now you get cushy and comfortable and i just got to serve that dude who's get like I know that stuff is out there, but it's just not really the game that I want to play and who I want to be. That's good. What are some things for Jason Getz you've done? You know, you mentioned before your kind of life of ministry. I mean, you were in ministry for most of your adult life. Yeah, for sure. What are some things in your life and specifically? in your time in ministry that have shaped you to where this is something that you can succeed in, in this season for you. Cause I like mm -hmm. to think that we go from glory to glory. I like to think that we're from faith to faith and we're, you know, growing yeah. and maturing in our lives. Maybe what are some, what are some mistakes that you made? What are some things, some, some, mm some fall flat on your face things that you believe are only going to help you in this next season, specifically in politics. Yeah. In, in kind of reflecting on this uh, over the last few months, even before you kind of asked this, this question was, I, I told, I told my wife, uh, it was probably two weeks ago that I kind of finally kind of came to her. And I was like, I think something's been going on. Like when you talk about the glory to glory um, early in my ministry, you know, as, kind of the traditional I was pretty on fire and pretty ignorant you know mm -hmm. as far as I, I thought I knew a lot of truth so it was it was pretty black and white for me and you know pretty a lot of excitement and not a lot of maybe listening to elders yeah. who have you know walked the journey a little ways and so um but but the there was a a real grace on the or or just an empowerment in a season of Jason I'm with you just, let's just let's just go reach some teenagers. Let's just like, you know, let's just be bold. That's yeah. kind of the bold in truth and bold in like going for things in the kingdom going, you know, trying to minister to people. And so there was a, there was an early on, there was a real deep season of boldness. And then uh, I, I really, then it felt like, and then you reach some people in that and you reach some people that, you know, their life is, their life's messy and now they're saved, but not everything's fixed. And then it's the, then the, the season of compassion, like in this, Oh, that just does not seem to be going away in your life. 
and and I, and I'm but I'm still here with you and maybe maybe that's part of what it's about and you know it, that it it all doesn't just you know the faith isn't a magic wand it, it it's a journey yeah. and it's a it's a trust in 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 a, in a good father and a, and a savior and in a, in a spirit that is available and that's wise and wants to show you how to fix things show you how to think different and an empowerment type of thing so then i just i kind of went through uh, uh as i was reflecting on it just kind of a, a a long then season of compassion really growing in me and when when early on i don't know that there was a whole lot of a lot of compassion and you know i i, I would say another thing probably a failure of mine is just i am i'm just ridiculously hard on myself like and i've had i've had people that you know, I, I respect their opinion and their eyesight on me. You know, sometimes you just can't see yourself and how hard you are on yourself. It's kind of making me well up a little bit right now. Um, and I, I just think that's that's part of, you know, I watched a video and I said, you know, as you're as you're entering this, as you're you're, you're running for, you know, a, a campaign, you know, think about if you could wave a magic wand, what what would you want to do? What would you want to what would you want to fix? And part of it for me, it really wasn't an issue. It was actually wanting people to believe in themselves, not, not in the, like the fairy tale, believe in themselves, but like actually believe that their life could have like deep purpose and meaning and that they could get there. And, it, and then it's worth the hardships that it takes to get there. Yeah. Like, and it, you actually can't get to purpose and meaning without those because they make you who you are. And uh, it's kind of a roundabout way of, of, uh, of saying of like what, what I think has prepared me to be successful in this is because uh, I think right at the heart of it is, is, you know, what John said about Jesus was like, what, what, what's this guy like? Like, just kind of, how can I put it into words? It's like, he's full of grace and truth. Like he's full of both. He's not one or the other. He's not just this raw, raw guy. And he's not just this, oh, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. It, he, he has a solution, but he has a truth. Like in it, there, there is a standard. And I feel like that, that that's what has kind of grown up into me um, over the years that um, I, I think is a good offering. And that I would love yeah. it. if people would offer me their, their grace and truth of what they've learned on their journey, I'd be open arms to it. And yeah. so that that's kind of a, you know, big part of, what what i feel like is is going to 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 help me in it and hopefully be successful that's good man do you have do you have aspirations in government in politics beyond this at this point not really because yeah. i don't really know enough about it to know yeah. kind of where you know where that would fit um and what that would look like um you know, whenever, whenever you think about it, it was like, oh yeah, that'd be, be cool. But I don't even know what, you know, yeah. then being a Senator or a governor, what does that even entail? And is it, is that even in the cards? What are the, you know, qualifications for something like that? Okay. So it's, it's not outside of my thinking, but it's not necessarily in my scope of like, I'm going for this. I'm going to be president or it's like, <laughs> dude, I think that says I, to be honest, I think that's where a lot of the slimy crap comes from. You know, is the going for it? That's where I'll, is there? They've got aspirations for things other than what they're doing, you know. And I think that that answer you gave says a lot about your integrity and about your willingness to. I mean, you you understand the work that it's going to take to do what you're doing, and um, I think a lot of times politicians forsake the work because they are on to other things before they even mm -hmm. fi finish what they said they were going to do. So. I think uh, I think that was a good answer. Good job. You passed the test. I would I vote for test. you if I was in district. Darren's voting for me. Sweet. If I was in district 118. Even though he can't. <laughs> 118, right? Uh, 119. 119. Yep. If, peop if people want to know and learn more about you and your your message and your campaign, what can they where can they go? Uh, there's a pretty simple website um, that just kind of has a, a bit about you know kind of what um what platform i'm running on um jason gets for kansas.com and 
Jason gets for Kansas.com. There's, 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 it's not a huge website or anything like that, but it, it just kind of speaks to a bit of it. And then probably my, I, I just created a Facebook page just, just for this. And that's, that's probably where you can get the most information of that, where I've shared kind of more of the personal details and what's coming up and what's going on. And I've got a friend running, a, I'm not on Twitter, um, but I've got a friend running an account um, for that because it's kind of more the news and, yep. you know, policy stuff kind of goes out first there. So we l- at least thought we'd take advantage of, you know, that, that platform. Um, and then probably just, you know, what, what I'd love is, you know, just kind of the personal messages of it, you know, people who um, get on the Facebook and yep. got a question shoot me a message those are the ones that i uh, in my interactions so far those are the ones that i've i've liked the best and Good. just hey what's up why are you doing it yep. um how can i help or uh, i'm not voting for you or you know how yeah. what, whatever that whatever that truth is but the, those personal live? interactions are pretty, yeah, yeah. Probably. <laughs> that's good I, I will put all those links in the show notes too by the way so people okay. can um reach out to you I think that'd mm-hmm, be a good mm-hmm. thing. I know you're a guy that would gladly go get a cup of coffee. So you got one, stuff. you got one more question on here. We, I mean, we kind of got into it. The, the, yeah. the church role. Yeah. Okay. I'll ask it, man. What do you feel? What's the role of the, what, what role does or should the church play in politics? Because you'll have a lot of people holding up signs, separate church and state, yep. you know, Church doesn't belong in the state. The state doesn't belong. All that stuff. From a as a believer, and as one who enjoys reading the Bible, I understand how God used His people to not just influence politics, mm-hmm. not just influence the throne, but play a big part in it. And so I know that God's not afraid to have His church and His people. Um, be there one of the one it. of the craziest stories is not even america to me it's the it's rome yeah like the the romans crucifying christ and then you know 300 years later they got crosses on the top of every building yeah in that in that you know same city where they beheaded paul and yeah. it's like the, there was a there was a cultural shift in that region of the world over that you know, you're not talking just two, three years, kind of a, you know, just something quick. Yeah. It was this, but we can't beat them. So now we got to co-opt it. Now we got to make it the national religion. Now we got to, that this is too good. We, now we got to, we got to leverage the power of it. And that's yeah. where it really kind of went a direction that, you know, I think most of Christendom wished it, had, wished that it hadn't, but it did. And there yeah. was a reason that it did is because it was doing really well in culture at a, at an organic level. And then it got co-opted and yeah. to where that's where I feel like the, you know, some of the separation of church and state where the church is mandating people to believe and mandating things. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm pretty anti on the mandates is because that, that can go in a direction that, um, nobody likes, and yeah. I mean, nobody. And as far as the, 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 the church's role and, you know, sometimes I've, this is just a weird difference that I guess we, I felt like I got to, had to get clear. It's like the church is the body of Christ mm-hmm. now. And that I think needs to be represented in a multifaceted way because there, there is a multifaceted nature to the body of Christ. That's why it's, it's a body, it's fingers, it's toes, it's eyes, it's ears, all these different ways of representing the same body, mm-hmm. but it's gotta be the same values. It's gotta be the same truth. And that's the trick is uh, <laughs> that, that being done well and allowing other people to do the truth. The, the truth is still key. You know, there's just, there's a lot of stuff about sexuality out there. And that, that was another thing that that kind of pushed me into the race is there was a vote on, you know, biological males, you know, getting to compete against women that the representative that I'm running against that in a sense voted on my behalf. Yeah. You went the opposite direction of my values on that. So 
truth being stood for by the body of Christ in culture and in politics, it, I, I don't think we should be limited from that. And we yeah. wouldn't want to limit anybody else from it. So we can't be uh, have a limited mindset of how we can go and influence that. But just like anything, you know, if, if it's a sport, you better train for that sport, you yeah. know, and and get good at how does that how does that sport work? Um, but I, I what I wrote was, you know, for the light of the world, we're commissioned to add clarity to dark and maybe dimly lit areas of culture. A dark room is harder to navigate through. Yeah. God's truth provides great clarity in marriage, family, money, the role of government, personal identity, sin, salvation, just to name a few. We are the transfer of truth and grace as the people of God. Grace and truth to me equal true love. When we, are, when we the people carry the goodness of God into our daily lives, we will and should touch the arena of politics. It's good. Yeah. Whether, through, whether that's through a vote or whether that's through a church that's very boisterous about politics and that, that leader and that group of people feel like that is, a, that is a thing that they want to go after. And another group is like, that's not our thing, but empower that and then yeah. go after what God calls them to go after. I'm just a, I'm a big believer that if you're going to vote, you need to know what you're voting for. Like, I, I, I really do think that too many people are voting in this country. Like that don't have a clue, like they're, they're literally being told who to vote for. They're literally going off of, you know, mob mentality type stuff. And that's where, you know, I've heard the church take a lot of flack from people that think the church shouldn't be talking about politics. And I don't, I don't feel that way at all. I don't think the church should be stupid when it comes to voting. Yep. I don't think that our children should be idiots. My, my girls can't vote yet, but they're not going to, they're going to know how to vote when it's time to. Right. So I'm, I'm raising up my family to, like we said before, have a biblical worldview that's not going to go away at the booth, you know? Yeah. And my, my circle of influence, my family, we're going to know what we're voting for. And we're going to know how to vote. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's glorifying to God because a lot of yeah. people don't, they, they don't know, they don't know. And I don't and think church, this is, this, church, is, this isn't just a, a, my right to vote. You know, this isn't just a, I have a right to, no, you have a right to be knowledgeable as to what you're voting for because it's a big deal. Yeah. And, and it doesn't take much to look at where we're at right now as a nation. There's a lot of regret. There's a lot of folks that didn't know what they were doing when they were at the polls voting and they are griping about paying high prices at the pump. Mm -hmm. They're griping about things that are affecting them in their local world because of how they voted. And, you know, I just think it's good for us to be knowledgeable. And that's why I think the schools should be teaching how to vote. I've, I have no problem with teachers teaching people. They should be mm -hmm. teaching voting church should be teaching voting. Like if I'm going to get my information from my church, that's where I'm going to get my information from. You know, yeah. I would hope they're not holding truthful information away from me and then tell me to go vote, you know, go well, cast when your you, vote. When, when you think, when I think back on services that were kind of uh, maybe a, had a little uproar, uproar to them, yeah, uh, we're controversial and people will storming out and yeah. standing up and shouting and being mad. It was the ones where I was addressing a real cultural, in a sense, voting issue. Right. Like, hey, this is going on in our culture and I want to talk to you about what the scripture has to say about it. And that up against a different worldview than the scriptures. Yep. OK, that that there's a tension there. Yep. and the truth kind of shined the light on that tension and there was, there was an uproar. So I, I very much do think that the, you know, probably one of the best ways and, and, and I think preaching about it, that's fine. Um, probably one of the better and best ways would be a little bit smaller. I, mm -hmm. I would say that's a little bit more, you know, not just one guy talking or one gal talking and everybody staring at the back of everybody else's head, but there's a biblical citizenship class that that's out there that uh, maybe we could find and put in the notes. Cause that, that there's, there's some really good resources that are 
just honest about our founding, honest about how the yeah. con- constitution, you know, it basically the founders quote the scriptures more than anything else. And that's not a disputable fact. It may not be a liked fact by yeah. everybody, but it's, it's still a fact like, and to, like you said, to, to say anything different is, is ignorant. And if you want to change that and you know, they have your reasons why that that's, that, that's the freedom they established for yeah. you to be able to have that. I was going to say, make that your point, that direction. Then. make that and, your goal to go change mm-hmm. it. You have every right in the world to go Absolutely. try to change. I may not agree with so, you, but yeah. you have that right. And let's do it respectfully. And let's, yeah. you know, we're not going to change it by burning churches down. I'll tell you that mm-hmm. right now. We're burning yeah. down crisis centers. We're not going to change anything in a, a better way by doing things like that. So yeah, those things uh, are happening in our world right as now. Much but as yeah, people, yeah, go ahead. That's that's my short answer on the church. Yeah. I just I, I wanted to touch it because it's 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 one for me, you know. But you know, kind of some of the, you know, we kind of had some pain points uh, in in our leadership uh, of of church and really trying to do more of a cultural like kingdom and Jesus culture, you know, the type thing and figure out how to, what to try different, what, how to get back to, you know, leadership style that could mold that back into a, a more robust organic uh, out in like that's God, God's spirit is moving this thing, not just, you know, coming to a, a facility for an hour, try and trying to move God's direction that way. And, you know, that there was, that was hard. Yeah. And we learned a lot, but anyway, I, I just, I, I think we, it's still possible. And that's where I was going with it of kind of my dissatisfaction with the change the church is currently creating in the lives of believers. And I'm not saying all churches, but yeah. kind of the, most of them are on decline, not just in attendance, but as far as we're, we're not making very many disciples. Yeah. And that's the problem. If you, if you kind of want the core problem of, unless, you know, you said, unless you're born again, yeah, this thing's not going to work. Right. So he- helping that happen in culture is, is my, is still my core fix. Um, and a, another verse, not to go too long, but uh, the whole idea of our fight is not against flesh and blood. Mm. Talked about that. So it's not necessarily a Democrat or Republican that if we're a Christian, we have that viewpoint that that is my enemy. It's actually anything that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, you know, yeah. principalities, forces, darkness, that this is just that that's the biblical worldview of it's not particularly people but those ideas can get into people and then i got to resist that person or the idea that's alive in that person that's contradictory to the kingdom of god yeah and that's a bit of how i would like to play a part in government is just to make sure there's that we're not setting things up laws judicial things that that then i might have some sway on that aren't setting themselves up against the, the knowledge of God that aren't making it harder for people in our culture to, to know the truth about God, not necessarily choose him, not necessarily like still free pass, but actually have good information yeah. about it. And I feel like there's, there is things in our culture that are very much diametrically opposed <laughs> to the knowledge of God. Yeah. And so in that, there's a role if you want to bring it all together in politics and in the church and in me and in you to do something about that, yeah. to resist that being set up in our culture uh, against people who don't, who are ignorant. Like, like you've been, like you've been yeah. kind of talking about who, who just don't know, you know, and Jesus said famous words, the father forgiven them for they know not what they do. Yeah. And you know, so forgiveness should really, you need to repent of your anger, Darren, because <laughs> you, Father, forgive them for yeah. that. No, no, if it truly is ignorance, we have a great kind of spot to say, oh, and in that, uh, <laughs> there's a point, though. That. There's a point, though. <laughs> if no, I'm, I'm, if your ignorance is going to harm my children, exactly. If your ignorance gonna is going to set force a an standard agenda on me. If mm-hmm. it's going to set a standard for the nation to move 
in a direction that opposes the will of God, th there comes a time when I'm not, I'm never going to suggest violence, but at the very least, you're a part of an agenda that I'm not going to be a part of. And yeah, we're just, righteous anger. We're just not going to be a part truth. of the same. Yeah. Same we're not going to be a part of the same thing. thing. I'm going to yeah. move forward with what the Lord's calling me to do and worry less about what your feelings are about it. <laughs> when, when it comes mm -hmm. down to that. And I, yeah, that's the reason I'm not running for office. So that's okay. I'm thankful. I'll still call you for advice. I'm I, thankful I... <laughs> for your heart for people. You have an amazing heart for people, Jason, and uh, that's coming out for sure. So very valuable, and I think that's probably part of the reason why I was excited to see you doing this because um, just with some of the information you shared about your current representative, you know, doesn't seem to be a, a person of the people if you're not going to be around the people that you're representing. So yeah. um, I think that. And and in and in fairness, I I just think his season of life has has shifted, you know, and yeah. you know, and if that season of life life has shifted, maybe your position should shift too. Yep. And good. we'll we'll see what the people vote, but he's yep. he's done some good things. There's just some things recently that I disagree with, and it kind of motivated me to try and do something different. You know, That's good responsible culture, not a victim culture. You know, take responsibility for what you know the wrongs in the world and get your towel out start washing some feet start making some yeah. things better and i bet change will happen yeah slay some giants if you have to thanks everybody for no <laughs> 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 i appreciate you man thank you for uh for coming on here i think that was good to thanks for the invite man chit chat about it and uh good luck and blessings to you during this i'll take them both I'm going to, again, have the, sh have the information in the show notes for any of you locals that are interested in learning more about Jason and what he's, what he's uh, passionate about. I think uh, if you hear this and you're wanting to vote for me, the main, I mean, the first step is just, are you registered to vote? That's right. You know, a lot, a lot of people are, are not, they, they wouldn't mind being involved in that. And it's, and it's very simple. There's online ways to do it. And, you know, just actually get registered if that's something that you're wanting to do. If Please educate yourself. There's support, you know, if you'd like to volunteer, uh, all those things are um, possible over this next month. We got August 2nd. Yeah, what kind of help do you need? What kind of help can, can how, how can people help you out? Uh, I mean, campaign stuff, probably going to be about six dollars $7,000 with, you know, banners and, you know, things like that. All and the stuff. So yeah. just little little donations. And, you know, I'd, I'd like it to come from, you know, doesn't have to be huge ones, you know, but just everybody doing if you believe in it if you believe in me if you've if there's been impact over the years and and some value added you know this would be a, a time where i you know just give an ask and it's not comfortable i never like asking for money or anything like that but you know it's not really to pay for my lifestyle it's to pay for this mission yeah and good. and that's 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 what it is if you believe you know kind of in in some of the stuff i've been talking about i could i could use your support to you know further this and and be a be a win you know yeah. be a not not a waste but a win and uh you know then we're gonna we've got about 900 houses left that we're gonna go knock on doors and just make sure like you said that the people are just educated educated on you know what some of the past votes of their current representative are and these are republican voters registered voters people that voted in the last primary so i'm not knocking on every door but um so we're just going and making sure like, hey, if you agree with that, that is OK. Um, I represent something different and I would like to vote on the behalf of those different causes. And if that's the person you'd like to support. So we're just if you'd like to help knock on some doors and put out signs in yards and uh, maybe walk the parade at Dodge City Days and some yeah, other man. things. Um, glad hand, kiss some babies with me, you know, do the <laughs> do the pol politician thing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, but you know, just some of the fun stuff, but then some of the dirty work of, you, know, you know, maybe folding up some mailers. We're going to do one big mailer, um, right at the middle of the month. And so some of those will need to be folded and lick some stamps and there's all kinds of stuff out there, but holler at me if you would like to help, uh, financially, prayerfully and acts of service. They're all good. It's good. Awesome, man. 
thank you very much. Proud of you. Love you tons. And uh, tell the family hi. I will do it. You uh, as well. All right, man. Be blessed. See you. You too. Later.